there were two small Mazda SUVs, until there were three. The Mazda CX-30 is brand new for 2020. The 30 part makes no sense. It's bigger than the CX-3, smaller than the CX-5. What is the point? Well, you walk into your Mazda dealer and you sit in the Mazda 3 hatchback. You want to sit up taller. You buy the CX-30. This one costs $31,000, loaded. But unlike the Hyundai Kona I just reviewed, the CX-30 feels high-end everywhere, and it comes with more standard features. But the Zoom Zoom Mazda, it's not as sporty to drive, and inside, it's just as tight on space. I am a forgiving guy though, and my eyes are not lying to me. This looks good. But first, if you like watching car reviews, subscribe to the Car Gurus YouTube channel. We want to hear from you in the comments, and don't hesitate to share these videos with your friends. Mazda designers get it. They really get it. The CX-30 has the fluid, beautiful curves of the three hatchback. Yeah, I said beautiful about a little crossover that starts under $24,000, because it's true. I dare you to find a more elegant car in this segment. Let's try the luxury segment. Mercedes GLA, Lexus UX, nope. I wouldn't pay twice as much for half the style. Thin LED headlights sink into the body below the grille trim and hood. It's so aggressive and slopes down like a Jaguar, yet this design language is all Mazda. Same for the LED taillights, standard, which evoke Alfa Romeo. The CX-30 calls itself a crossover, but in reality, it's a lifted Mazda 3 hatchback that sits two and a half inches taller off the ground, and the roof is five inches taller. You also have all this black plastic fender cladding. In any color, it looks pretty good, but this one is the one to get. Soul Red Crystal, you gotta see it in person. Like all new Mazdas, the CX-30 puts detail into places most cheaper cars wouldn't dare. You don't feel short change inside the CX-30, or any Mazda interior for that matter. Just look at the door pull. It looks like it's floating off the panel, because it kind of is. You got this polished black piece for the windows and mirror switches, but then you got this really pretty and soft, soft is the key for a lot of things in this interior, brown material and contrast white stitching, goes with this really nice door panel that goes right into the cowl, all over the dash, and it's all top stitched. Everything I'm touching right now is either padded or soft. The only really hard pieces are under here. And again, the grain of the plastic is actually pretty acceptable. And down here, where most car makers will have really hard plastic where you can knock your knees against, this is also padded. So everything in here, to be honest, has that tactile quality that on most economy cars, you just don't find. It's evident that Mazda wanted a simple and inviting space. Nothing is cluttered. Everything you touch works with precision, like the window switches. They're way nicer than the ones in a Mercedes A-Class, and they all power up and down automatically. And check out the seats. I'm not kidding, they're better looking and feel more supportive than the $70,000 Cadillac XT6. All right, small gripes. These blank plates could put useful functions right here, and they don't. I don't like the wasted space under the climate controls. And the center console won't fit a phone and doesn't have wireless charging. That's an option that goes into the center armrest. Thankfully, it slides back and covers the entire cubby. And it's really comfy. Space is tight, but it's bearable for short drives. You do get more rear legroom than the Mazda 3 hatchback, but the CX-30 still has these big, bad blind spots. It's tough to see out the back of this car. Now behind me, there's 20 cubic feet of storage. With these seats folded, 45. The Mazda CX-5 has 60, and it's only six inches longer. The standard and only engine in the CX-30 is a two and a half liter inline four, naturally aspirated. Now the reason why it's revving so high is because there's not a lot of torque. Without a turbocharger, you don't get a lot of torque at lower RPMs. That might seem like technical talk that doesn't matter, but when you're coming out of traffic, when you want to merge into the highway, that's what really pushes your car. The CX-30, it's a good engine when you look at it on screen. 186 horsepower, 186 pound-feet of torque, six-speed automatic transmission, I got manual shifter paddles, but compared to a lot of turbocharged competitors, the oomph just isn't really there. Uh, the peak torque is 4,000 RPM. And I keep talking about torque just to show you that modern engines have come a long way. And even in small crossovers like this, we expect more from them. At least I do. Other than that, the engine's really quiet. It's smooth. The whole ride is refined. 
There's a lot of noise insulation in here, so you really don't hear a lot of the outside world at all. Most small crossovers, you hear wind and road and tire noise just bleeding inside. Not at all here. It's a great experience. Also, the steering and brakes are right up there. And the handling is also good, you know, especially with all-wheel drive or not. The chassis is just sorted. So a lot of good things to like. Just don't love the engine. The handling's good, but even with optional all-wheel drive, the CX-30 rolls a little more and doesn't have the same grip that made the Hyundai Kona such a blast to drive. The tires are narrower. Also, there's no turbo. Fuel economy, it's good, not great, considering the size of this car. EPA estimates are 25 MPG city, 32 highway, 27 combined for the all-wheel drive premium that I'm driving right now. Now, the front-wheel drive model has marginally better EPA estimates, so really, other than the cost, why wouldn't you buy the all-wheel drive? See, the thing about small crossovers is they pack a lot of technology and features, but in doing so, they approach other cars that the same company already makes, cars that are roomier and just as well equipped for the same money. For my money, I'd rather get the CX-5, even if it doesn't look as pretty, or I'd get the Mazda 3 hatch, which offers all-wheel drive and when optioned up, costs less. A lot comes standard. Those LED headlights and taillights, HD radio and a nine inch infotainment screen, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, auto braking, pedestrian and cyclist detection, driver attention monitor, this cool digital speedometer that shows the car ahead if you're moving out of the lane and other cars in your blind spots. Most cars charge extra for all that. There's more on upper trims, like the 12 speaker Bose stereo with some great surround sound modes. The head up display is sharp and it's a real display, not some flip up piece of plastic. And check this out. With the key in my pocket, the car senses I've walked away, and it locks. The infotainment is not a touchscreen, but it's intuitive with this rotary controller and shortcut buttons. The menus are just as simple and clean looking as the interior. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come standard on the Select trim, which is one up from the base model. You've got choices, and Mazda gives you four really good choices if you're in the market for a small four-door car. The CX-30 has this style and premium feel to justify its price, more so than any of its competitors. Honestly, it drives with the polish I find in a small Mercedes. Just be aware though, you're not gonna find that much value with any of these small crossovers. For the same amount of money, you can easily upgrade to more space. So tell us, where would you park your 31 grand? For the full review, check out cargurus.com and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.